All right, folks. Hey, glad to have you for another video. In this video, we're going to discuss and you're going to watch me build uh, a bus bench that uh, fits the 112th scale uh, Vapor Mesco figure. And, um, you know, I built this for 112th, so it is going to be small. The dimensions are five inches long with a two inch wide seat and a four inch high backrest uh so but everything you see here i built entirely out of xps foam i did airbrushing and i used a product called ak terrains streaking grime that helped me achieve some of the dripping down uh grimy look from the back of the bench seat there uh that drips down but anyway let's take a look at how i built the bench let's go all right. So as I mentioned in the other part of the video, you can see the measurements there on the paper. Uh, I'm just taking a piece of scrap XPS foam and I'm going to measure out a four inch uh, piece by about four inch piece of foam. Um, the reason I need it four inch is because... Uh, the most important part of that measurement is going to be the backrest. I need to make sure that the backrest is going to be tall enough. Uh, so I've got kind of a loose sketch on the back, on that white paper there that you see, uh, camera left, that is going to give me a, a, a guide of how I want the end caps, uh, the actual like concrete part of the bench uh, that, the, that the wood sits on. Uh, I kind of want it to be like an L shape with a bit of an arch at the bottom. So I'm going to set my Proxon cutter here. This is a great tool for being able to do stuff like this because I wouldn't be able to do this as nicely with a uh, knife blade, uh, an X-Acto blade. So uh, we're going to set the fence on the Proxon uh, four inches. And, you know, I do it a little bit more. I do like a four uh, and a sixteenth because the hot the, the hot wire cutter it cuts by melting and so you lose a little bit of um your measurement uh when you go to cut it which it doesn't matter in this because we're not building a house we're building a bus bench <laughs> so you're not going to lose any significant amount but if you want to be super technical you can you know measure you know four and a sixteenth <laughs> and cut it uh but look how clean crisp and beautiful that cuts man uh it's perfect tool for a job like this um where we do need some exact you know pretty exact measurements now i'm gonna set the fence to two inches uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to give me it's going to give me the width of uh the seat that goes from one end of the concrete support to the other so i'm just making all my cuts basically right now so that i don't have to use the proxon cutter later i can kind of just knock this all out in one uh, shot and it's not really tough i'm really only going to be cutting uh, one two uh, end caps and a seat with a back so I don't, I'm not going to be making very many cuts, uh, but you'll see what a cool tool the Proxon cutter is for, for when I go to make the, uh, the end caps that hold up the, the, uh, you know, the, the concrete parts that hold the, the bench up itself. Uh, this is a, you'll see, uh, it, it's a pretty cool tool for what I'm going to use it for. Um, so we're just double checking and making sure we got a, uh, two inch wide by five inch long. Remember the bu the bench uh, on my diagram there to the left is five inches long. So I want to make sure that that I'm you know sitting here at two by five, and uh, we're looking pretty good, man. I'm I'm happy with that two inch. Now we're gonna do the back board uh, that uh, you know you would rest your back against as you sat in the bench. So once again, this is gonna be five inch and by four. And so we're going to, um, this is going to give us our, our back piece, but, uh, now I need to look at my, my, uh, diagram again. Sometimes I get lost in my measurements of what I'm doing, <laughs> the, the distractions, uh, and the, the focus as you get older, <laughs> it seems to, uh, get all mixed around sometimes but um you know so we're just going to double check a measurement here and what i need to figure out right here is when vapor sits down on this bench uh i need to see how high up off the ground it needs to be and so uh the overall height of the bench is going to be four inches but from where he sits to the bottom i need that i need that measurement and so that's what i'm doing right here uh and because if you just made the bench four by you know 
uh, four inch tall with a with a two inch wide seat. Well, it's you know he might not be able to sit in it. It might be too low or, or too high. So uh, I'm working out right here the height that needs to be uh, for where his butt is going to be. And I'm using Popeye here because I didn't want to get vapor out because. Uh, I didn't want to get him dirty. I paid a lot of money, way more than I should have for that figure. And so I don't want to get him dirty. Popeye, huh? I bought him used out of the box. So he, he's a little more, uh, not disposable, but I, I can get away with a little bit more with Popeye. <laughs> so once I work out the measurement here, which looks like it's going to be about two inches from where his butt comes in contact with the seat to where his feet will hang down. So then I can make another mark here and get that figured out and then draw some lines so I can, you know, get this cut and, uh, and patterned out. But, but this is a really simple build. Um, and I did, I, I kept everything real basic. All it was was foam, um, some airbrushing, and I did use a product for some streaky, grimy stuff, but I did a lot of the streaky, grimy stuff too with airbrush. So, uh, and you can do that with washes, whatever you have on hand. The basic build of the bench though was really easy, um, and it was really fun uh, to make. And I don't know why I didn't have a bench before. Somebody asked me, "Well, why don't you just print a bench?" You know, and I could probably 3D print a bench, but I don't want to. I like making stuff out of foam. And if I have the option to make stuff out of foam, uh, and I think I can do it reasonably well, then I'll I'll do it out of foam. So right here, I'm just shaping. Uh, this piece is going to be the end caps. Um, it's going to be two of them, actually. So I'm making a pattern with the curve and uh, where the back meets the the you know, the bench where you sit your butt. And I'm just kind of sketching out how I want this to ultimately be shaped. And you got to be careful here. Something I didn't think about was the curve of the bench. If the curve is too great, when the figure goes to uh, um, sit down, then you he's really, to be against the back of the bench, He's he's got to be... Uh, pushed back in there or if the curve is too great also the the board that uh the piece of foam that i cut has to be thin enough to be able to contour into that uh curved area back there and that was another thing to consider but i'm drawing the legs on here and remember i wanted an arch that paper to the left has the basic measurements and the basic idea but uh here's where i actually have to sketch it out and and think of of uh how i want it to be and i i didn't want to go for a a super like realistic look. I wanted a bit of a cartoony, bit of a, uh, you know, bendy kind of looking bench. Uh, and that's, that's just what I wanted. I could have made it all nice and square and stuff, but I just thought that that would be a little bit more, uh, than, than I wanted with this figure. I, I wanted to maintain some of the, the cartoony kind of character, you know, like, uh, aspects of it. So, uh, I thought I was going to use the fence here, but uh, I wasn't. I'm going to freehand kind of cut this through here. And this is important. The reason I'm cutting two of these, uh, this is a one inch thick piece of foam, um, four inch by uh, two inch. And I need the cut to be the same for both end caps. So I'm going to kind of freehand um, cut this pattern here with the uh, Proxon. And it's okay if it's not exactly perfect yet, because we're going to do some sanding anyway and smooth it out. So, um, it's better to, to leave a little extra, not go right up to the line with the hot wire cut and leave a little extra in case, uh, you know, cause you are going to sand. If you went right up to the line and then you happen to mess something up, then you go to sand it. Now you're just using material and losing mass that you can't afford to lose. So same thing on the bottom here. We're going to knock out the bottom uh, between the two legs and um, we're going to be left with a basic shape of an end cap that I can fine tune now. <laughs> it's like a big H. <laughs> it's a lowercase H. So now we're going to work on the back 
rest part of the bench and the seat here. These two pieces here, uh, I cut an extra in case I mess up. So <laughs> that way I don't have to do it again. Uh, and I'm going to trim these down just a little bit because I think they're a little bit, two inches is a little bit wide. I didn't take into account the thickness of the back seat and the two inches. And so it stuck out over the, uh, the end caps a little longer than I wanted. So uh, I thought it would look a little bit ugly. So we just made an adjustment on the fly, which is usually what happens. <laughs> and I cut some extra pieces sometimes because who knows what I'm going to mess up along the way. So here we've got a nice looking piece. It goes up against the back there and it also sits right at the very edge of the frame. And so it's going to fit nicely. Uh, and then I just pick up the other one and I kind of, you know, dry fit it there and make sure that it looks good also. And I think we're good. We now have a five inch by about an inch and a half uh, wide seat bottom. And we're good with that. And actually the, the pinholes and stuff that were in this uh, scrap foam work out great <laughs> they're like holes in the wood of the bench so <laughs> always save those scrap pieces man uh you know so here i got a quick measurement from the base of the seat up to the back is about two inches so uh the whole height of the bench itself is four inches but just that piece is uh two inches right there and so we're good i didn't uh and, and i just kind of loosely you know fit it together here to make sure it's gonna gonna work and that those pieces are thin enough that it will bend into the uh the curve of the backrest there uh if you cut too thick a piece it's not gonna you know form in there nicely and so that's what i did uh and i think what am I doing here? Oh, I'm setting the fence to the same thickness uh, as as this piece, since it's not an exact measurement, and I didn't measure it with it with a tape measure. A good way to make sure you're going to cut. If you need another piece the same thickness, you just hold it up uh, on the fence and push it up against the wire, and that automatically sets your um, your width uh, to cut. And I'm shaving off a little piece here. It's one great thing about this Proxon, man, is you can just slice this stuff out like some old slices of cheese, man. <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, I love it for that reason. I would like a taller fence, and there is a place that makes them, uh, but I'm just too lazy to order one. I may end up making one. Uh, sometimes you need a taller fence to get a nice, really clean cut. But um, we're cutting another piece here, and like I say, those holes work out really nicely. Uh, they just look like nuts that were knocked out in the in the wood for the the bus bench, and so it works out really cool. See how easy that thing cuts. If anybody wants a Proxon, I'll link it in the description down below of the video on Amazon uh, link. I mean, they've gone up in price since I bought mine, but they're really really just a valuable tool for stuff like this. I couldn't imagine trying to do this with just a uh, an Exacto knife or a box blade. Uh, now that I've got my pieces cut, we're just going to take all these scraps and I'm going to put them in my scrap box uh, because you can always use these pieces, man, for other stuff. Broken bits of wood, you know, something to, you know, trim, just so many things. You can see I've got, this is one of two boxes. <laughs> I've got two boxes like that of scraps because you just need every piece, right? <laughs> yeah, so... We're going to move this rascal out of the way and we're going to get on to some sanding. All right, on to some sanding. Now, we're not looking for perfect, perfect like sanding. We're looking to knock down the high parts and make it as smooth as we can. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. It would take so much longer with like an emery board or something like that. So I just have my Dremel with the drum sanding attachment on there. Um, and we're just knocking down, like I say, the high parts uh, where I cut it uneven. Remember when I ran this to the Proxon wire? Uh, and so we're just knocking some of that back and, and going to make sure that there is a you know, a smooth, even fit when I put the other pieces of foam in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but it does. It will have to really closely match the other end cap there. And you'll see how I do that later. But yeah, I would recommend doing this outside or 
even with a mask on. The pro the problem is here, I'm at really a low speed, uh, so it's it's okay, kind of. Just I'm trying to justify my laziness, but <laughs> pink powder goes where you don't want it to go. And if you've got 3D printers and you've got cameras and you've got other stuff going on, you don't really want pink foam dust covering things or getting into things, uh, or you don't really want to breathe it either. A mask would be good. I'm just hard headed and I'm lazy at times and <laughs> I take shortcuts. <laughs> I'm not going to go plug that in and go outside and sand it. I'm sorry. <laughs> in a perfect world, I would. <laughs> but uh, so we're just going in through here and kind of rounding out the cuts and making them look better and knock off the high parts, you know. And this is a great tool for this. Uh, it wouldn't work in this particular instance with like using sandpaper or an emery board or something because it's rounded in there and there's curves and it would just, you know this really makes quick work of it and I like quick work of things when I have the option because I'm not as patient uh, as I as I as I could be <laughs> I just don't have a lot of time I'll have got a few, few days in a row to get stuff knocked out you know because I have a real job and so I try to make the most efficient use of my time and uh, and this is one of those ways so we're gonna knock out some hard edges uh, from the corners and smooth this all out reasonably well and somebody of course is is texting me or there's a Facebook notification <laughs> but uh, we're gonna keep on plugging along with the sanding here and uh, getting these end caps to uh, match each other all right now I'll make sure they're reasonably smooth enough that the bus bench seat will fit in there and then I'll hold them up to each other and I'll kind of just in one final step keep them, you know, held together by hand and just just make sure that they're pretty consistent with each other in in uh, shape. Uh, obviously, you don't want one with high ridges and the other with low ridges because nothing's going to line up right and your bench is going to sit like cattywampus and, and cockeyed. Uh, so just going to dry fit it again and, and I think we're doing good look at that that bends right down into there nicely we've got a just enough overhang and same story on the other side uh, we're looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out and um, so we're good man on to the next part <laughs> I open up my big jar of rocks right here and I pull a rock out and I just get to remember these ends are going to be concrete stone kind of usually on a bus bench they're like a uh, a cast a precast concrete shape and so I'm just kind of after that look you know a precast concrete shape and I can achieve that with uh, this particular size of lava rock I'm using <laughs> and um, and I keep that jar of rocks because I use it to make bricks uh, and and so I have these rocks and you could do this with foil if you wanted the problem with foil is that these are pretty thin flexible pieces and if I roll it uh, I won't be able to secure it while I roll it with the foil and I might break it and so this way here see I've got my hands and my fingers giving counter pressure uh, against where I'm you know, rolling and pushing and pulling. So it kind of gives some extra, uh, extra support so I don't break or crack or, or tear this. And I like the way that the rock makes this look more so than the foil anyway. The foil tends to round out after a, a little bit of use. These rocks don't. They maintain all their little sharp random edges and I and I like that. So, uh, but that's, that's what I use these for. All right, once I've got them textured up with the rocks uh, the way I want, I go ahead and get my hot glue gun. Now, I was going to use tacky glue, but um, I decided against it, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. We're going to take a broken uh, popsicle stick, and we're just going to make a line by sight right down the middle to give you the illusion that this is two pieces of wood. Um, and then I will proceed to texture it with the broken end of the popsicle stick like you've probably seen me before if you've watched my other videos. And we'll just uh, drag it through there and create some wood grain effect and some little gouges and, you know, using various uh, 
varying amounts of pressure you can create and flipping the stick up on its end like I just did you can create some really cool textures in there that mimic wood really really nicely it's one thing I love about working with foam man you can make some really cool stuff and I'm not even that good <laughs> imagine if you really had great skill man there's people that do this so awesomely uh, and you know I can make wood and stone and bricks and stuff like that uh, you know and make it look really nice but working with foam is really really neat man I, I i i dig working with foam and those big popsicle sticks they're like a more like a tongue depressor than a popsicle stick but at any rate now is the time i had to make a decision well, I made it a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, I wanted to use hot glue for this because I did not want to wait for tacky glue to dry. The, the problem that you're going to run into with this and you have to be careful of is if the pieces you're going to hot glue are thin like the seat and the backboard of my uh, bus bench here, then you have to um, you have to do it carefully and what we're going to do is I'll, sh I'll show you I'll do a squeegee method because not only do you not want it to melt your foam but you don't want globs of glue pushing out or creating uneven surfaces on the surfaces that you sanded to make even so uh, what you saw me do there was take that popsicle stick after I put the glue on and I squeegeed off the excess and then I just held in place uh, the backrest of the bench uh, as I move all the strings of glue away <laughs> but squeegeeing it like that really really helps and then I put the glue on the thicker piece uh, of foam not on the thinner piece when I go to glue them together see squeegee that rascal off that really decreases the amount of time it takes to dry also because why there's a lot less glue there so you have to move fast uh, but that's just you know a cool little trick uh, if you haven't done that before it decreases your drying time but it creates a really even surface for the glue to stick to and uh and it makes it really nice uh, a nice finish using hot glue and you don't have to wait for tacky glue to dry for hours before you can keep working on your project <laughs> which is perfect for me we're going to put this on the bottom and once again you can see how it pushes down nicely into the form of the uh the seat uh, uh the concrete there just dry fitting it again making sure everything is good and we've got the right amount of overhang all right so now that we've got the bus bench assembled i'm going to take black mod podge which is just black paint mixed with Mod Podge and I'll tell you why I did this I, I was originally going to dry brush this uh, bus bench but I decided airbrushing was going to be a lot better because I was going to grime it and and you know add uh, different uh, things to it that I thought airbrush ultimately would would work better for uh, and so but it's it's this doesn't take away from that at all actually what what this does is uh, it really strengthens the bench because it's Mod Podge and it creates a really rigid finish on there and helps it uh, stay together better and it also does add a dark uh, base layer to paint over the top of uh, which you know allows some of the black to show through in parts that you might want it to show through like on the concrete end caps there and so um adding the mod podge to it that's black really uh you know whether you're going to dry brush or not uh it really does uh help add some strength and stability to the piece uh, a, a nice finish uh, on there that's you know rigid but um when you dry brush after adding the black mod podge uh, you're really going to get to keep all that wood grain and stuff in there. I wasn't so worried about keeping wood grain in this, the uh, the dark shadows between the wood grains, because this was going to be a painted bus bench, and I wasn't going to do any real paint peeling effect or anything. So I didn't really, uh, I didn't need the Mod Podge step. If you don't have black Mod Podge, don't worry about it. Uh, I, um, you know, you don't need it on this. Uh, it's just a, kind of an over, an overkill on here but um, it does 
you know, still serve a purpose. And this is just Mod Podge mixed with black paint. And uh, another tip, uh, you know, any Mod Podge that I use, I always use matte Mod Podge. I never use reflective surface finishes uh, because... Uh, I photograph this stuff and I use flash and um, I don't want any, even with constant light sources, if you're photographing uh, reflective surfaces like, you know, shiny Mod Podge or whatever, uh, it's really going to create hot spots and glares and give you trouble later when you're photographing uh, that you have to try to fix uh, either on set or in post. And it just becomes a headache. If you can build using matte finish mod podge and and uh, even my paints up there none of those are gloss they're all matte uh and those are just my acrylic paints that i use for regular painting uh but like i say and i use these stick pins because i have sausage fingers and i need to be able to hold stuff and so these pins help me <laughs> help me hold stuff while I paint because I'm not patient. I want to get it done and I need it to start drying. I'll even go so far when I'm done here as I put a heat gun on here. So <laughs> it really dries super quick uh, because like I say, I try to make the most use of my time. It's not that, uh, you know, I mean, I just don't have all day for these things to dry uh, because like I say, my time between this and, and work and family, I, I try to make the most uh, I can out of my my time and sometimes it works better better than other times but uh, at any rate so let's continue to paint this with Black Mod Podge all right here is a finished bus bench <laughs> from Black Mod Podge to a finished bus bench <laughs> in five seconds no uh, there are some other techniques that I used in here like I say I used some AK Terrain's grime I airbrushed a lot of that texture in and I uh use the uh, AK Terrain's Streaked Grime. Uh, I'll link that in the video description because that's a nice product. Um, and, you know, you can see it. It really did a great job on making this look like stone. I added some little uh, symbols on there with Sharpie markers and things like that to kind of look like graffiti-ish kind of stuff. I'm not good at graffiti at all, <laughs> but it really helps to be able to uh, add those little bits and pieces of... of uh, things that attract your eye to the to the prop well that's the end my friends <laughs> uh, here's uh, another look at the bench that you saw me build and how well it fits into uh, diorama and you can see some of the other props that I build in the back too pay phones fire hydrants uh, high voltage you know utility boxes on the wall uh, you know I built the other walls out of foam that you see here uh, but it's what I do I enjoy it uh, I do sell this stuff too so hit me up on uh, my Instagram store or my website follow me on all the different platforms that I'm on uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, here on YouTube. Uh, but there we go, man. You, even, even my <laughs> terrible graffiti uh, made the bench, added something to it. Uh, at any rate, uh, AK Grimes uh, or AK Terrain's uh, Street Grime. I'll link that in the video description. Uh, if you like the way that it made the bench look grimy, take care, folks. And we'll see you in the next video.